Part One of Hippolytus by Euripides, translated by Gilbert Murray. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aphrodite, read by Capricia Page. Hippolytus, read by M. B. Old Huntsman, read by Delmar H. Dolbeer. Nas read by april gonzalez chorus leader read by naomi park chorus one read by amanda friday chorus two read by elizabeth clatt chorus three read by amy Graymore. phaedra read by elizabeth clatt theseus read by bruce peary henchman read by bob gonzalez artemis read by ariel lipshaw narrator Read by Linny. The scene is laid in Trozen. Great among men, and not unnamed am I, the Cyprian in God's inmost halls on high, and wheresoe'er from Pontus to the far red west men dwell, and see the glad day star, and worship me. The pious heart I bless, and wreck that life that lives in stubbornness. For that there is, even in a great God's mind, That hungereth for the praise of humankind. So runs my word, and soon the very deed shall follow. For this prince of Theseus' seed, Hippolytus, Son of that dead Amazon, and reared by St. Lupithius In his own straight ways, hath dared alone of all Trozen To hold me, least of spirits and most mean and spurn my spells and seek no woman's kiss but great apollo's sister artemis he holds all most high gives love and praise and through the wild dark woods for ever strays he and the maid together with swift hounds to slay all angry beasts from out these bonds to more than mortal friendship consecrate i grudge it not no grudge no i nor hate Yet, seeing he hath offended, I this day shall smite Hippolytus. Long since my way was opened, nor needs now much labour more. For once from Pythias' castle to the shore of Athens came Hippolytus overseas, seeking the vision of the mysteries. And Phaedra there, his father's queen high-born, saw him, and as she saw, her heart was torn with great love by the working of my will and for his sake long since on paula's hill deep in the rock that love no more might roam she built a shrine and named it love at home and the rock held it but its face always seeks trozen o'er the seas then came the day when theseus for the blood of kinsmen shed spake doom of exile on himself and fled phaedra beside him even to this Trozen, and here that grievous and amazed queen, wounded and wandering, with narrow word wastes slowly, and her secret none hath heard, nor dreamed. But never thus this love shall end. To Theseus' ear some whisper will I send, and all be bare, and that proud prince, my foe, his sire shall slay with curses. Even so endeth that boon, the great lord of the main, to Theseus gave the three prayers not in vain. And she, not in dishonour, yet shall die. I would not rate this woman's pain so high as not to pay mine haters in full fee, that vengeance that shall make all well with me. But soft, here he comes striding from the chase our prince hippolytus i will go my ways and hunt us at his heels in a loud throng glorying artemis with praise and song little he knows that hell's gates opened are and this his last look on the great day star aphrodite withdraws unseen by hippolytus and a band of huntsmen who enter from the left singing they pass the statue of Aphrodite without notice. Follow! 
oh follow me singing on your ways her in whose hand are we her whose own flock we be the zeus child the heavenly to artemis be praise hail to thee maiden blessed proudest and holiest god's daughter great in bliss leto born artemis hail to thee maiden far fairest of all that are yea and most high thine home child of the father's hall hear o most virginal hear o most fair of all in high god's golden dome the huntsmen have gathered about the altar of artemis hippolytus now advances from them and approaches the statue with a wreath in his hand to thee this wreathed garland from a green and virgin meadow bear i o my queen where never shepherd leads his grazing ewes nor scythe has touched only the river dews gleam and the spring bee sings and in the glade hath solitude her mystic garden made no evil hand may cull it only he whose heart hath known the heart of purity unlearned of man and true whate'er befall take therefore from pure hands this coronal o mistress loved thy golden hair to twine for soul of living man this grace is mine to dwell with thee and speak and hear replies of voice divine though none may see thine eyes oh keep me to the end in this same road an old huntsman who has stood apart from the rest here comes up to hippolytus my prince for master name i none but god gave i good counsel wouldst thou welcome it right gladly friend else were i poor of wit knowest thou one law that through the world has won what wouldst thou and how runs thy law say on it hates that pride that speaks not all men fair and rightly pride breeds hatred everywhere and good words love and grace in all men's sight ay and much gain withal for trouble slight how deemst thou of the gods are they the same surely we are but fashioned on their frame why then wilt thou be proud and worship not whom if the name be speakable speak out she stands here at thy gate the cyprian queen i greet her from afar my life is clean clean nay proud proud a mark for all to scan each mind hath its own bent for god or man god grant thee happiness and wiser thought these spirits that reign in darkness like me not what the gods ask o son that man must pay hippolytus turning from him to the others on huntsman to the castle make your way straight to the feast room tis a merry thing after the chase a board of banqueting and see the steeds be groomed and in array the chariot dight i drive them forth to-day he pauses and makes a slight gesture of reverence to the statue on the left, then to the old huntsman. That for thy Cyprian friend, and not beside. Hippolytus follows the huntsman, who stream by the central door in the castle. The old huntsman remains. Huntsman, approaching the statue and kneeling. O oh, Cyprian, for a young man in his pride I will not follow. Here before thee, meek, in that one language that a slave may speak, I pray thee, oh, if some wild heart in froth of youth surges against thee, be not wroth forever. Nay, be far and hear not then. Gods should be gentler and more wise than men. He rises and follows the others into the castle. The orchestra is empty for a moment. Then there enter from right and left several Trosanian women, young and old. Their number eventually amounts to fifteen. There rises the rock-born river of ocean's tribe, men say. The crags of it gleam and quiver, and pitchers dip in the spray. A woman was there with raiment white to bathe and spread in the warm sunlight, and she told a tale to me there by the river, the tale of the queen and her evil day, how, ailing beyond allayment, Within she hath bowed her head, and with shadow of silken raiment, the bright brow hair be spread. For three long days she hath lain forlorn, her lips untainted of flesh or corn, for that secret sorrow beyond a lament that steers to the far sad shore of the dead. 
Is this some spirit, O child of man? Doth Hecate hold thee perchance, or Pan? Doth she of the mountains work her ban, or the dread Corybantes bind thee? Nay, is it sin that upon thee lies, sin or forgotten sacrifice? In thine own Dictinus see wild eyes. Who in Limna here can find thee? For the deep's dry floor is her easy way, And she moves in the salt-wet whirl of the spray. Or doth the lord of Erechtheus race, Thy Theseus watch for a fairer face, For secret arms in a silent place, Far from thy love or chiding. Or hath there landed amid the loud hum Of Piraeus' sailor crowd, Some Cretan venturer, weary browed, who bears to the queen some tiding, some far home grief that hath bowed her low and chained her soul to a bed of woe? Nay, no, yet not. This burden hath always lain on the devious being of woman. Yea, burdens twain, the burden of wild will and the burden of pain. Through my heart once that wind of terror sped, but I in fear confessed, cried from the dark to her in heavenly bliss, the helper of pain, the bow-maid Artemis, whose feet I praise for ever, where they tread far off among the blessed. But see, the queen's grey nurse is at the door, sad-eyed and sterner, methinks, than of yore. With the queen, doth she lead her hither to the wind and sun? Ah, fain would I know what strange betiding hath blanched that brow, and made that young life wither. The nurse comes out from the central door, followed by Phaedra, who is supported by two handmaids. They make ready a couch for Phaedra to lie upon. O oh, sick and sore the days of men, what wouldst thou? What shall I change again? Here is the sun for thee, here is the sky, and the very pillows when swept lie by the castle door. For the cloud of thy brow is dark, I ween, And soon thou wilt back to thy bower then, So swift to change is the path of thy feet, And near things hateful, and far things sweet. So was it before. Oh, pain were better than tending pain, For that were single, and this is strain. With grief of heart and labour of limb, Yet all man's life is but ailing and dim, And rest upon earth comes never, but of any far-off state there be, dearer than life to mortality, the hand of the dark hath hauled her off, and mist is under and mist above. And so we are sick of life, and cling, and earth of this nameless and shining thing, for other life is found and sealed, and the deeps below are unrevealed, and we drift on legends forever. Phaedra, during this, has been laid on her couch. She speaks to the handmaids. Yes. Lift me, not my head so low. There, hold my arms. Fair arms they seem. My poor limbs scarce obey me now. Take off that hood that weighs my brow, And let my long hair stream. Nay, toss not, child, so feveredly. The sickness best will win relief. Like quiet rest and constancy, all men have grief. Phaedra not noticing her. Oh, for a deep and dewy spring, with runlets cold to draw and drink, and a great meadow blossoming, long grassed, and poplars in a ring, to rest me by the brink. Now, nah, child, shall strangers hear this, Jane? So wild, and thoughts of fever flame. Oh, take me to the mountain, oh, past the great pines and through the wood, up where the lean hounds softly go, a wine for wild things' blood, and madly flies the dappled roe. O oh God, to shout and speed them there, an arrow by my chestnut hair drawn tight, and one keen glimmering spear! Oh, if I could! But wouldst thou with them fancies all, thy hunting on thy fountain brink? But wouldst thou by the city wall? Con's hair our own brook plash and fall, downhill if thou wouldst drink. 
O mistress of the sea-lorn mere, Where horse-hoofs beat the sand and sing, O Artemis, that I were there To tame Anetian steeds And steer swift chariots in the ring! Now I mount and walk, but now thy hands Ye end up with craving for the chase, And now toward the unsea-swept sands Thou roamest where the course is pace. O old yon steed, but prophet knows The power that holds thy curve And throws thy swift heart from his race. At these words, Phaedra gradually recovers herself and pays attention. What have I said? Woe's me! Had where gone straying from my wholesome mind? What, did I fall in some god's snare? Nurse, veil my head again and blind mine eyes. There is a tear behind that lash. Oh, I am sick with shame. Ay, but it hath a sting to come to reason. Yet the name of madness is an awful thing. Oh, could I but die in one swift flame, unthinking, unknowing! I veil the face, child, but that so mine own were veiled for evermore. So sore I love thee, though the law of long life mocks me, and I know how love should be a lighthouse thing, not rooted in the teeth of the heart. With gentleness tries to twine apart, if needs say call, the closeth cling. Why do I love thee so, O fool, O fool, the heart that bleeds for twain, and builds, men tell us, walls of pain? To walk by love's unswerving rule, the same forever, stern and true. For thorough is no word of peace, tis not too much makes trouble cease, and many wise men boast that you. The leader of the chorus here approaches the nurse. Nurse of our queen, thou watcher old and true, we see her great affliction, but no clue have we to learn the sickness. Wouldst thou tell the name and sort thereof? T'would like us well. A small leech craft have I, and she tells no man. Thou knowest no cause? Nor when the unrest began? It all comes to the same. She will not speak. Leader, turning and looking at Phaedra. How she is changed and wasted, and how weak. Tis the third day she hath fasted utterly. What, is she mad, or doth she seek to die? I know not, but to that it sure must lead. Tis strange that Theseus takes her of no heed. She hides her wind, and verse it is not so. Can he not look into her face and know? Nay, nah, he is on a journey these last days. Canst thou not force her then, or think of ways to trap the secret of the sick heart's pain? Have I not tried all ways, and all in vain? Yet will I cease not now, and thou shalt tell, if in her grief I serve a mistress well. She goes across to where Phaedra lies, and presently, while speaking, kneels by her. Dear daughter mine, all that before was said, let both of us forget, and thou instead be kindlier, and unlock that prison brow, and I who follow thee in the wrong road now will leave it and be wiser. If thou fear some secret sickness, there be women here to give thee comfort. Phaedra shakes her head. No, not secret. Then is it a sickness meant for aid of men? Speak that a leech may tell thee. Son still? Nah, child, but prophet silence. It is ill this that I counsel makes me see the wrong. If all then yield to me, nigh nah, child, I long. For one kind word, one look. Phaedra lies motionless. The nurse rises. Oh, woe is me. Women will labour here all fruitlessly. Oh, as far off as ever from her heart, she ever scorned me, and her has no part, of all my prayers. Turning to Phaedra again. Nay, here thou shalt and be. If so thou wilt, more wild than the wild sea. But no, thou art the little one's betrayer, if thou die now, shall child of thine be heir, to thee the user's castle. Nay, not thine, I ween, but hers, that barbed Amazonian queen, hath loved a child to bend thy children low, a bastard all hearted, says not so. Hippolytus. Oh. She starts up, sitting, and throws the veal off. That stings thee? Nurse, most sore thou hast hurt me. In God's name, speak that name no more. Thou seest, thy mind is clear. 
but with thy mind thou wilt not save thy children nor be kind to thine own life my children nay most dear i love them far far other grief is here nurse after a pause wondering thy hand is clean a child from strange blood my hand is clean but is my heart o oh god so my name is bell hath made thy spirit then he hates me not that slays me nor i him theseus the king hath wronged thee in man's voice oh could i but stand guiltless in his eyes o oh, speak what is this that fraught mystery nay leave me to my wrong i wrong not thee nurse suddenly throwing herself in supplication at phaedra's feet not wrong me him thy word is all desolate leave phaedra rising and trying to move away what wouldst thou force me clinging to my sleeve yea to thy knees and weep and let not go woe to thee woman if thou learn it woe i know no bitterer woe than losing thee yet the deed shall honour me why how i honest thee tis all i claim why so i build up honour out of shame then speak and higher still thy fame shall stand go in god's name nay leave me loose my hand never until they grant me what i pray phaedra yielding after a pause so be it i dare not tear that hand away nurse rising and releasing phaedra tell all thou wilt daughter i speak no more mother poor mother that didst love so sore what meanest thou child the white bull of the tide and thou sad sister dionysus bride child what is the shame of the house where thou wast born and i the third sinking most all forlorn nurse to herself i'm all lost and fair what will she say from there my grief comes not from yesterday i come no nearer to the parable oh would that thou couldst tell what i must tell i am a seer in things i wot not of phaedra again hesitating what is it that they mean who say men love a thing most sweet my child yet dolorous only the half belike hath fallen on us nurse starting on thee love oh what sayst thou what man's son what man's there was a queen an amazon hippotis sayst thou phaedra again wrapping her face in the veal nay twas thou not i phaedra sinks back on the couch and covers her face again the nurse starts violently from her and walks up and down oh god what wilt thou say child how wilt thou try to kill me oh it is more than i can bear women i will no more of it this glare of hated they that is shining in the sky i'll fling down my body and let it lie till life be gone the women got rest with you my wakes are over for the pure and true of force to evil against their own heart's vow and love it she suddenly sees the statue of cyprus and stands with her eyes riveted upon it ah oh, cyprian no god art thou but more than god and greater that hath trust me and my queen and all our house to dust she throws herself on the ground close to the statue o women have ye heard nay dare ye hear the desolate, desolate cry of the young, young queen's misery my queen i love thee dear yet liefer were i dead than framed like thee woe woe, woe to, to me for this thy, thy bitter bane, bane. Surely, surely the food man, man feeds, feeds upon is pain. pain how wilt thou bear thee through this livelong day lost and thine evil naked to the light strange things are close upon us who shall say how strange save one thing that is plain to sight the stroke of the cyprian and the fall thereof on thee thou child of the isle of fearful love phaedra during this has risen from the couch and comes forward collectedly as she speaks the nurse gradually rouses herself and listens more calmly o women dwellers in this portal seat of pelops land 
gazing towards my Crete. How oft in other days than these have I through night's long hours thought of man's misery, and how this life is wrecked! And to mine eyes, not in man's knowledge, not in wisdom lies the lack that makes for sorrow. Nay, we scan and know the right, for wit hath many a man, but will not to the last end strive and serve. For some grow too soon weary, and some swerve to other paths, setting before the right the diverse far-off image of delight, and many are delights beneath the sun. Long hours of converse, and to sit alone musing, a deadly happiness, and shame. Though two things there be hidden in one name, and shame can be slow poison if it will. This is the truth I saw then, and see still. Nor is there any magic that can stain that white truth for me, or make me blind again. Come, I will show thee how my spirit hath moved. When the first stab came, and I knew I loved, I cast about how best to face mine ill. And the first thought that came was to be still and hide my sickness. For no trust there is in man's tongue that so well admonishes and counsels and betrays, and waxes fat with griefs of its own gathering. After that I would my madness bravely bear, and try to conquer by mine own heart's purity. My third mind, when these two availed me not to quell love, was to die. Motion of protest among the women. The best, best thought, gainsay me not, of all that man can say. I would not have mine honour hidden away. Why should I have my shame before men's eyes kept living? And I knew in deadly wise shame was the deed and shame the suffering, and I a woman too to face the thing despised of all. O oh, utterly accursed be she of women who so dared the first to cast her honour out to a strange man. Twas in some great house surely that began this plague upon us. Then the baser kind, when the good led towards evil, followed blind and joyous. Cursed be they whose lips are clean and wise and seemly, but their hearts within rank with bad daring. How can they, O oh, thou that walkest on the waves, great Cyprian, how smile in their husbands' faces, and not fall, not cower before the darkness that knows all! I dread the dead still chambers, lest one day the stones find voice, and all be finished. Nay, friends, tis for this I die, lest I stand there having shamed my husband and the babes I bear. In ancient Athens they shall some day dwell. My babes, free men, free-spoken, honourable. And when one asks their mother proud of me, For, oh, it cows a man, though bold he be, To know a mother's or a father's sin. Tis written, one way is there, one, To win this life's race, Could man keep it from his birth a true clean spirit. And through all this earth to every false man that hour comes apace when time holds up a mirror to his face, and girl-like marvelling there he stares to see how foul his heart. Be it not so with me. Ah, God, how sweet is virtue and how wise, and honour its due meed in all men's eyes. Nurse, who has now risen and recovered herself. Mistress, such shocks with terror struck me low. A moment since, hearing of this thy woe, but now I was a coward. And men say I was sick of thought the wiser is all way. This is no monstrous thing, no grief too dire, to meet with quite thinking. In her eye a most strong goddess has swept down on thee, thou lovest. Is it so strange? Many there be beside thee. And because thou lovest, wilt fall and die, and must all lovers die then? all that are or shall be 
a blithe law for them. Nay, when in might she swoops, no strength can stem Cypris, and if man yields him, she is sweet. But is he proud and stubborn? From his feet she lifts him, and, how think you, flings to scorn. She ranges with the stars of eve and morn, she wanders in the heaving of the sea. And all life leaves from her, I, this is she, that sows love's seed and brings love fruits to birth. And great love's brethren are all we are on earth. Nay, they who call great books of ancient days or dwell among the muses, tell and praise. How Zeus himself once yearned for Semele, her maiden eels in her radiancy, swept careful us to heaven away, away, for soul love's sake. And there they dwell, men say, and fear not, fret not, for the thing too stern hath met and crushed them. And must thou then turn and struggle? Sprang there from thy father's blood, the little soul, all lonely, all the god that rules thee, is the other than our god. Now yield thee to men's ways, and kiss their rods. How many, deemst thou, of men good and wise, know their own home's blots, and avert their eyes? How many fathers, when a son has strayed, and tall beneath the Cyprian, bring him aid, not chiding? And man's wisdom here hath been, to keep what is not good to see. Unseen, a straight and perfect life is not for man. Now in the shut house, let him, if he can, bid sheltered rooms and make all lines true. But here, out in the wide sea fallen, and full fear, hope is there so easily to swim to land. Canst thou but set thine ill days on one hand, and will get days on the other verily? O child of woman, life is well with thee. She pauses, and then draws nearer to Phaedra. Now I the daughter, seize thy evil mind, seize thy first pride, for pride it is, and blind, to seek to outpass gods. Love on and dare, a god hath willed it, and since pain is there, make the pain sleep. Songs are there to bring calm and magic words, and I shall find the balm, be sure to heal thee, else in sore dismay, when men could not, we women find our way. What is there, queen, and all this woman says, to ease thy suffering? But tis thee I praise, albeit that praise is harder to thine ear than all her chiding was, and bitterer. O oh, this it is hath flung to dogs and birds, men's lives and homes and cities fair false word. How oh, why speak things to please our ears? We crave not that. Tis honour, honour we must save. Why pray so proud? Brave no ways that thou cravest. Tis a man's arms. Phaedra moves indignantly. Up and face, the truth of what thou art, and name it straight. Be not the life thrown open here for fate, to be torn, hadst thou been a woman pure, or wise or strong, never had I feel your, of joy and heartache, let thee answer this, that when a whole life one great battle is, to win or lose, no man can blame me then. Shame on thee! Lock those lips, and ne'er again let word nor thought so foul have harbour there. Foul, if thou wilt, but better than the fair, for thee and me, and better too, the deed behind them, if it say thee in thy need, that the word honour thou wilt die to win. Nay, in God's name, such wisdom and such sin are all about thy lips, urge me no more, for all the soul within me is wrought o'er by love. And if thou speak and speak, I may be spent, and drift where now I shrink away. Well, as thou wilt, so best never to hear, but having it to take a counsel a second. Mark me now, I have within love filters to make peace where storm hath been, that with no shame, no scathe of mine, shall save thy life from anguish, wilt but thou be brave. To herself, rejecting. Ah, but from him, the beloved, some sign we need. A word, or I meant him, to twine him with a charm, and one spell knit from twain. Is it a potion or a salve? Be plain. Who knows? Seek to be helped, child, not to know. Why art thou ever subtle? I dread thee so. As I would dread everything. What dost thou dread? Least to his ear some word be whispered. Now let be, child. I will make all well with thee. Only thou, O Cyprian of the sea, be with me, and mine own heart, come what may, shall know what ear to seek, what word to say. 
the nurse, having spoken these last words in prayer apart to the statue of Cyprus, turns back and goes into the house. Phaedra sits pensive again on her couch, till towards the end of the following song, when she rises and bends close to the door. Eros, Eros, who blindest tear by tear, men's eyes with hunger. Thou swift foe that pliest deep in our hearts, joy like an edged spear. Come not to me with evil haunting near. Wrath on the wind, nor jarring of the clear wing's music as thou fliest. There is no shaft that burneth, not in fire, not in wild stars far off and flinging fear, as in thine hands the shaft of all desire, Eros, child of the highest. In vain, in vain by old Alpheus' shore the blood of many bulls doth stain the river, and all Greece bows on Phoebus' Pythian floor. Yet bring we to the master of man no store, the key-bearer, who standeth at the door close barred, where hideth ever the heart of the shrine. Yea, though he sack man's life like a sacked city, and moveth evermore girt with calamity and strange ways of strife, him have we worshipped never. There roamed a steed in Arcalia's wild, a maid without yoke, without master, and love she knew not, that fair king's child. But he came, he came with a song in the night, with fire, with blood, and she strove in flight, a torrent spirit, a maenad white, faster and vainly faster, sealed unto Heracles by the Cyprian's might. Alas, thou bride of disaster! O mouth of Dursi, O God-built wall, that Dursi's wells run under, Ye know the Cyprian's fleet foot fall. Ye saw the heavens around her flare, When she lulled to her sleep that mother fair, Of twy-born Bacchus, and decked her there, The bride of the bladed thunder. For her breath is on all that hath life, And she floats in the air. Be like, death-like, a wonder. During the last lines, Phaedra has approached the door and is listening. Silence, ye women. Something is amiss. How? In the house? Phaedra, what fear is this? Let me but listen. There are voices. Hark! I hold my peace, yet is thy presage dark. O oh, misery! O oh, God, that such a thing should fall on me! What sound, what word, O oh, woman, friend, makes that sharp terror start out thy lips? What ominous cry half heard hath leapt upon thine heart? I am undone. Bend to the door and hark. Hark what a tone sounds there, and sinks away. Thou art beside the bars. Tis thine to mark the castle's floating message. Say, oh, say, what thing hath come to thee? Why, what thing should it be? The son of that proud Amazon speaks again in bitter wrath, speaks to my handmaiden. I hear a noise of voices, nothing clear. For thee the din hath words, as though barred locks floating at thy heart it knocks. Pander of sin, it says. Now canst thou hear? And there, betrayer of a master's bed. Ah, me, betrayed, betrayed! Sweet princess, thou art ill-bested, thy secret brought to light and ruin near, by her thou heldest dear, by her that should have loved thee and obeyed. Ay, I am slain. She thought to help my fall with love instead of honour, and wrecked all. Where wilt thou turn thee, where? And what help seek, O wounded, to despair? I know not, save one thing to die right soon, for such as me God keeps no other boon. The door in the centre bursts open, and Hippolytus comes forth, closely followed by the nurse. Phaedra cowers aside. O oh, Mother Earth, O oh, Son that makest clean, what poison have I heard, what speechless sin? Hush, my prince, less other mark, and guess. I have heard horrors, shall I hold my peace? Here, by this fair right arm, son, by thy pledge. Down with that hand, touch not my garment's edge. Oh, by thy knees, be silent, or I die. Why, when thy speech was all so guiltless, why? It is not me, fair son, for every year. Good words can bravely forth, and have no fear. Thy oath, 
Thy nose, I took thy nose before. Twas but my tongue, twas not my soul that swore. And son, what wilt thou? Wilt thou slay thy kin? I own no kindred from the spawn of sin. He flings her from him. No, spare me. Thou hast one's ear. Oh, spare. O oh God, why hast thou made this gleaming snare woman to dog us on the happy earth? Was it thy will to make man? Why his birth through love and woman? Could we not have rolled our store of prayer and offering, royal gold, silver, and weight of bronze before thy feet, and brought of God new child souls as were meet for each man's sacrifice, and dwelt in homes free, where nor love nor woman goes and comes? How is that daughter not a bane confessed, whom her own sire sends forth? He knows best, and will some man but take her pays a dower. And he, poor fool, takes home the poison flower, laughs to hang jewels on the deadly thing he joys in, labors for her robe wearing, till wealth and peace are dead. He smarts the less in whose high seat is set a nothingness, a woman not availing. Worst of all, the wise, deep thoughted. Never in my hall may she sit thrown to thinks and waits and sighs, for Cyprus breeds most evil in the wise and least in her whose heart has naught within. For puny wit can work but puny sin. Why do we let these handmaids pass the gate? Wild beasts were best, voiceless and fanged to wait about their rooms that they might speak with none, nor ever hear one answering human tone. But now dark women in still chambers lay plans that creep out into light of day on handmaids' lips. Turning to the nurse. As thine accursed head braved the high honor of my father's bed and came to traffic, our white torrent's spray shall drench mine ears to wash those words away. And couldst thou dream that I, I feel impure still at the very hearing? No, for sure, woman, naught but mine honor saves ye both. Had thou not trapped me with that guileful oath, no power had held me secret till the king knew all. But now, while he is journeying, I too will go my ways and make no sound. And when he comes again, I shall be found beside him, silent, watching with what grace thou and thy mistress shall greet him face to face. Then shall I have the taste of it and know what woman's guile is. Woe upon you, woe! How can I too much hate you, while the ill ye work upon the world grows deadlier still? Too much? Make woman pure and wild love tame, or let me cry forever on their shame. He goes off in fury to the left. Phaedra, still cowering in her place, begins to sob. Sad, sad and evil starred is woman's state. What shelter now is left or guard? What spell to loose the iron knot of fate? And this thing, O oh my God, O oh thou sweet sunlight, is but my desert. I cannot fly before the avenging rod falls, cannot hide my hurt. What help, O oh ye who love me, can come near? What god or man appear to aid a thing so evil and so lost? Lost, for this anguish presses soon or late to that swift river that no life hath crossed. No woman ever lived so desolate. Ah, me, the time for deeds is gone. The boast proved vain that spake thine handmaid, and all lost. At these words, Phaedra suddenly remembers the nurse, who is cowering silently where Hippolytus had thrown her from him. She turns upon her. Oh, wicked, wicked, wicked! Murderous heart to them that loved thee! Hast thou played thy part? Am I enough trod down? May Zeus my sire blast and uproot thee, stab thee dead with fire. Said I not, knew I not thine heart, to name to no one soul that this now is my shame? And thou couldst not be silent. So no more I die in honour. But enough, a store of new words must be spoke and new things thought. This man's whole being to one blade is wrought of rage against me. Even now he speeds to abase me to the king with thy misdeeds. Tell Pythias, fill the land with talk of sin. 
Oh, cursed be thou, and whoso else leaps in to bring bad aid to friends that want it not. The nurse has raised herself, and faces Phaedra, downcast, but calm. Mistress, thou blamest me, and all thy lots so bitter sore is, and as things so wild. I bear with all, yet if I would, my child, I have mine answer. God is thy hair, King Lord, and nurse is thee, I love thee, and I saw only some balm to heal thy deep despair, and found not what I sought for. Else I were wise, and thy friend, and good, had all sped right, so fair is it with us all in the world's sight. First stab me to the heart, then humour me with words. Oh, tis fair, tis all as it should be. We talked too long, child. I did ill. But, oh, there's a way to save thee, even so. A way? No more ways. One way hast thou trod already, foul and false and loathed of God. Be gone out of my sight, and ponder how thine own life stands. I need no helpers now. She turns from the nurse, who creeps abashed away into the castle. Only do ye, high daughters of Trozen, yet all ye here be as it had not been. Know not, and speak of not, tis my last prayer. By God's pure daughter Artemis, I swear, no word will I of these thy griefs reveal. Tis well. But now, yea, even while I reel and falter, one poor hope, as hope now is, I clutch at in this coil of miseries, to save some honour for my children's sake, yea, for myself some fragment, though things break in ruin around me. Nay, I will not shame the old, proud Cretan castle whence I came. I will not cower before King Theseus's eyes, abased for want of one life's sacrifice. What wilt thou, some dire deed beyond recall? Die. But how die? Let not such wild words fall. Phaedra, turning upon her. Give thou not such light counsel. Let me be to sate the Cyprian that is murdering me. To-day shall be her day, and all strife past, her bitter love shall quell me at the last. Yet dying shall I die another's bane. He shall not stand so proud where I have lain bent in the dust. Oh, he shall stoop to share the life I live in, and learn mercy there. She goes off wildly into the castle. End of part one. Part two of Hippolytus by Euripides. Translated by Gilbert Murray. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Could, Could I take, take me to some, some cavern for, for my hiding? In the hilltops where the sun scarce hath trod, or a cloud make the home of mine abiding, as a bird among the bird groves of God? Could I wing me to my rest amid the roar Of the deep Adriatic on the shore, Where the waters of Eridanus are clear, And Phaethon's sad sisters by his grave Weep into the river, And each tear gleams a drop of amber in the wave, To the strand of the daughters of the sunset, The apple tree, the singing, and the gold, Where the mariner must stay him from his onset, and the red wave is tranquil as of old. Yea, beyond that pillar of the end, that Atlas guardeth, would I wend, where a voice of living waters never ceaseth, in God's quiet garden by the sea, and earth, the ancient life-giver, increaseth joy among the meadows like a tree. O shallop of Crete, whose milk-white wing through the swell and the storm beating bore us thy prince's daughter. Was it well she came from a joyous home to a far king's bridal across the foam? What joy hath her bridal brought her? Sure some spell upon either hand flew with thee from the Cretan strand, seeking Athena's tower divine. And there, where Munichus fronts the brine, crept by the shore-flung cable's line, the curse from the Cretan water. 
and for that dark spell that about her clings sick desires of forbidden things the soul of her rend and sever the bitter tide of calamity hath risen above her lips and she where bends she her last endeavour she will hie her alone to her bridal room and a rope swing slow in the rafters gloom and a fair white neck shall creep to the noose a shudder with dread yet firm to choose the one straight way for fame and lose the love and the pain for ever the voice of the nurse is heard from within crying at first inarticulately then clearly help ho the queen help who so hearkeneth help cease use is past called in a noose of death god is it so soon finished that bright head swinging beneath the rafters phaedra dead o oh, haste this knot about her throat is made so fast will no one bring me a swift blade say friends what think ye should we haste within and from her own hands knotting loose the queen nay are there not men there tis an ill road in life to finger at another's load let it lie straight alas the cool white thing that guards his empty castle for the king ah let it lie straight heard ye what she said no need for helpers now the queen is dead the women intent upon the voices from the castle have not noticed the approach of theseus he enters from the left his dress and the garland on his head show that he has returned from some oracle or special abode of a god he stands for a moment perplexed ho oh, women and what means this loud acclaim within the house the vassal's outcry came to smite mine ears far off it were more meet to fling out wide the castle gates and greet with the joy held from god's presence the confusion and horror of the women's faces gradually affects him a dirge cry comes from the castle how not pythias hath time struck that hoary brow old is he old i know but sore it were returning thus to find his empty chair the women hesitate then the leader comes forward o oh, theseus not on any old man's head this stroke falls young and tender is the dead ye gods one of my children torn from me thy motherless children live most grievously how sayest thou what my wife say how she died in a high death knot that her own hands tied a fit of the old cold anguish tell me all that held her or did some fresh thing befall we know no more but now arrived we be theseus to mourn for thy calamity theseus stays for a moment silent and puts his hand on his brow he notices the wreath what and all garlanded i come to her with flowers most evil starred god's messenger ho oh, varlets loose the portal bars undo the bolts and let me see the bitter view of her whose death hath brought me to mine own the great central door of the castle is thrown open wide and the body of phaedra is seen lying on a bier surrounded by a group of handmaids wailing ah me what thou hast suffered and hast done a deed to wrap this roof in flame why was thine hand so strong thine heart so bold wherefore o oh, dead in anger dead in shame the long long wrestling ere thy breath was cold o oh, ill-starred wife what brought this blackness over all thy life a throng of men and women has gradually collected ah me this is the last here o oh my countrymen and bitterest of theseus labours fortune all unblest how hath thine heavy heel across me passed is it the stain of sins done long ago some fell god still remembereth that must so dim and fret my life with death i cannot win to shore and the waves flow above mine eyes to be surmounted not ah wife sweet wife 
what name can fit thine heavy lot gone like a wild bird like a blowing flame in one swift gust where all things are forgot alas this misery sure tis some stroke of god's great anger rolled from age to age on me for some dire sin wrought by dim kings of old sire this great grief hath come to many a one a true wife lost thou art not all alone deep deep beneath the earth dark may my dwelling be and night my heart's one comrade in the dearth o oh, love of thy most sweet society this is my death o oh, phaedra more than thine he turned suddenly on the attendants speak who speak can what was it what malign swift stroke o oh, heart discounselled leapt on thee he bends over phaedra then as no one speaks looks fiercely up what will ye speak or are they dumb as death this herd of thralls my high house harboureth there is no answer he bends again over phaedra woe woe god brings to birth a new grief here close on the other's tread my life hath lost its worth may all go now with what is finished the castle of my king is overthrown a house no more a house vanished and gone o oh god if it may be in any way let not this house be wrecked help us who pray i know not what is here some unseen thing that shows the bird of evil on the wing theseus has read the tablet and breaks out in uncontrollable emotion a oh, horror piled on horror here is writ nay who could bear it who could speak of it what o oh my king if i may hear it speak doth not the tablet cry aloud yea shriek things not to be forgotten oh to fly and hide mine head no more a man am i god what ghastly music echoes here how wild thy voice some terrible thing is near no my lips gates will hold it back no more this deadly word that struggles on the brink and will not o'er yet will not stay unheard he raises his hand to make proclamation to all present ho hearken all this land the people gather expectantly about him hippolytus by violence hath laid hand on this my wife forgetting god's great eye murmurs of amazement and horror theses apparently calm raises both arms to heaven therefore o thou my father hear my cry poseidon thou didst grant me for mine own three prayers for one of these slay now my son hippolytus let him not outlive this day if true thy promise was lo thus i pray o oh, call that wild prayer back o oh, king take heed i know thou wilt live to rue this deed it may not be and more i cast him out from all my realms he shall be held about by two great dooms or by poseidon's breath he shall fall swiftly to the house of death or wandering outcast or strange land and sea shall live and drain the cup of misery ah see here comes he at the point of need to shake off that evil mood o king have heed for all thine house and folk great theseus hear theseus stands silent in fierce gloom hippolytus comes in from the right father i heard thy cry and sped in fear to help thee but i see not yet the cause that racked thee so say father what it was the murmurs in the crowd the silent gloom of his father and the horror of the chorus women gradually work on hippolytus and bewilder him he catches sight of the bier ah oh, what is that nay father not the queen dead murmurs in the crowd tis most strange tis passing strange i ween twas here i left her scarce an hour hath run since here she stood and looked on this same sun what is it with her wherefore did she die theseus remains silent the murmurs increase 
Father, to thee I speak. Oh, tell me, why, why are thou silent? What doth silence know of skill to stem the bitter flood of woe? And human hearts in sorrow crave the more for knowledge, though the knowledge grieve them sore. It is not love to veil thy sorrows in from one most near to thee and more than kin. Theseus to himself. Fond race of men so striving and so blind, ten thousand arts and wisdoms can ye find, desiring all and all imagining, but ne'er have reached nor understood one thing to make a true heart there where no heart is. That were indeed beyond man's mysteries, to make a false heart true against his will. But why this subtle talk? It likes me ill, father. Thy speech runs wild beneath this blow. Theseus, as before. Oh, would that God had given us here below some test of love, some sifting of the soul, to tell the false and true. Or through the whole of men two voices ran, one true and right, the other as chance willed it, that we might convict the liar by the true man's tone, and not live duped forever every one. Hippolytus, misunderstanding him, then guessing at something of the truth. What? Has some friend proved false? Or in thine ear whispered some slander? Stand I tainted here, though utterly innocent? Murmurs from the crowd. Yet dazed am I. Tis thy words daze me, falling all awry, away from reason, by fell fancies vexed. O oh, heart of man, what height wilt venture next? What end comes to thy daring and thy crime? For if with each man's life twill higher climb, And every age break out in blood and lies beyond its fathers, Must not God devise some new world, far from ours, To hold therein such brood of all unfaithfulness and sin? Look, all, upon this man, my son, his life sprung forth from mine, he hath defiled my wife, and standeth here convicted by the dead, a most black villain. Hippolytus falls back with a cry, and covers his face with his robe. Nay, hide not thine head. Pollution is it? Thee it will not stain. Look up, and face thy father's eyes again. Thou friend of gods, of all mankind elect, thou the pure heart by thoughts of ill unflecked i care not for thy boasts i am not mad to deem that gods love best the base and bad now is thy day now vaunt thee thou so pure no flesh of life may pass thy lips now lure fools after thee call orpheus king and lord make ecstasies and wonders thumb thine hoard of ancient scrolls and ghostly mysteries now thou art caught and known shun men like these i charge ye all with solemn words they chase their prey and in their hearts plot foul disgrace my wife is dead ha ah, so that saves thee now that is what grips thee worst thou caitiff thou what oaths, what subtle words shall stronger be than this dead hand to clear the guilt from thee? She hated thee, thou sayest. The bastard born is ever sore and bitter as a thorn to the true brood. A sorry bargainer in the ills and goods of life thou makest her, if all her best beloved she cast away to wreck blind hate on thee what wilt thou say through every woman's nature one blind strand of passion winds that men scarce understand are we so different know i not the fire and perilous flood of a young man's desire desperate as any woman and as blind when cypress stings save that the man behind has all men's strength to aid him nay twas thou but what avail to wrangle with thee now, when the dead speaks for all to understand, a perfect witness? Hie thee from this land to exile with all speed. Come never more to God-built Athens, not to the utmost shore of any realm where Theseus' arm is strong. 
what shall i bow my head beneath this wrong and cower to thee not isthmian sinus so will bear men witness that i laid him low nor skiron's rocks that share the salt sea's prey grant that my hand hath weight vile things to slay alas whom shall i call of mortal men happy the highest are cast down again father the hot strained fury of thy heart is terrible yet albeit so swift thou art of speech if, if all this matter were laid bare speech were not then so swift nay nor as fair murmurs again in the crowd i have no skill before a crowd to tell my thoughts twere best with few that know me well nay that is natural tongues that sound but rude in wise men's ears speak to the multitude with music none the less since there is come this stroke upon me i must not be dumb but speak perforce and there will i begin where thou began'st as though to strip my sin naked and i speak not a word dost see this sunlight in this earth i swear to thee there dwelleth not in these one man deny all that thou wilt more pure of sin than i two things i know on earth god's worship first next to win friends about me few that thirst to hold them clean of all unrighteousness our rule doth curse the tempters and no less who yieldeth to the tempters how thou sayest dupes that i jest at nay i make a jest of no man i am honest to the end near or far off with whom i call my friend and most in that one thing where now thy mesh would grip me stainless quite no woman's flesh hath e'er this body touched of all such deed not what i save what things a man may read in pictures or, or hear spoke nor my fame being virgin sold to read or hear again my life of innocence moves thee not so, so be it show then what hath seduced me let me see it was that poor flesh so passing fair beyond all woman's loveliness was i some fond false plotter that i scheme to win through her thy castle's heirdom fond indeed i were nay a, a stark madman but a crown thou sayest usurped is sweet <laughs> nay rather most unblessed to all wise-hearted sweet to fools and them whose eyes are blinded by the diadem in contests of all valor fain would i lead hellas but in rank and majesty not lead but be at ease with good men near to love me free to work and not to fear that brings me more joy than any crown or throne he sees from the demeanour of theseus and of the crowd that his words are not winning them but rather making them bitterer than before it comes to his lips to speak the whole truth i have said my say save one thing one alone oh had i here some witness in my need as i was witness could she hear me plead face me and face the sunlight well i know our deeds would search us out for thee and show who lies but now i swear so hear me both the earth beneath and zeus who guards the oath i never touched this woman that was thine no words could win me to it nor incline my heart to dream it may god strike me down nameless and fameless without home or town an outcast and a wanderer of the world may my dead bones rest never but be hurled from sea to land from land to angry sea if evil is my heart and false to thee he waits a moment but sees that his father is unmoved the truth again comes to his lips if twas some fear that made her cast away her life i know not more must i not say right hath she done when in her was no right and right i follow to mine own despite it is enough god's name is witness large and thy great oath to assoil thee of this charge is not the man a juggler and a mage cool wits and one right oath what more to assuage sin and the wrath of injured fatherhood am i so cool nay father tis thy mood that makes me marvel by my faith wert thou the son and i the sire 
and deemed i now in very truth thou hadst my wife assailed i had not exiled thee nor stood and railed but lifted once mine arm and struck thee dead thou gentle judge thou shalt not so be sped to simple death nor by thine own decree swift death is bliss to men in misery far off friendless for ever thou shalt drain amid strange cities the last dregs of pain wilt verily cast me now beyond thy pale not wait for time the lifter of the veil ay if i could past pontus and the red atlantic marge so do i hate thine head wilt wait nor oath nor fate nor prophet's word to prove me drive me from thy sight unheard this tablet here that needs no prophet's lot to speak from tells me all i ponder not thy fowls that fly above us let them fly o ye great gods wherefore unlock not i my lips ere yet ye have slain me utterly ye whom i love most no it may not be the one heart that i need i ne'er should gain to trust me i should break mine oath in vain death but he chokes me with his saintly tone up get thee from this land be gone be gone where shall i turn me think to what friend's door betake me banished on a charge so sore whoso delights to welcome to his hall vile ravishers to guard his hearth withal thou seek'st my heart my tears i let it be thus i am vile to all men and to thee there was a time for tears and thought the time ere thou didst up and gird thee to thy crime ye stones will ye not speak ye castle walls bear witness if i be so vile so false i fly to voiceless witnesses yet here a dumb deed speaks against thee and speaks clear alas would i could stand and watch this thing and see my face and weep for very pity of me full of thyself as ever not a thought for them that gave thee birth nay they are not o oh, my wronged mother o oh, my birth of shame may none i love e'er bear a bastard's name up thralls and drag him from my presence what tis but a foreign felon heard ye not the thralls still hesitate in spite of his fury they touch me at their peril thine own hand lift if thou canst to drive me from the land that will i straight unless my will be done hippolytus comes close to him and kneels nay not for thee my pity get thee gone hippolytus rises makes a sign of submission and slowly moves away theseus as soon as he sees him going turns rapidly and enters the castle the door is closed again hippolytus has stopped for a moment before the statue of artemis and as theseus departs breaks out in prayer so it is done oh dark and miserable i see it all but see not how to tell the tale o oh, thou beloved leto's maid chase comrade fellow rester in the glade lo i am driven with a caitiff's hand forth from great athens fare ye well o land and city of old erechtheus thou trozen what riches of glad youth mine eyes have seen in thy broad plain farewell this is the end the last word the last look come every friend and fellow of my youth that still may stay give me godspeed and cheer me on my way ne'er shall ye see a man more pure of spot than me though mine own father loves me not hippolytus goes away to the right followed by many huntsmen and other young men the rest of the crowd has by this time dispersed except the women of the chorus and some men of the chorus of huntsmen surely the thought of the gods hath balm in it all way to win me far from my griefs and the thought deep in the dark of my mind clings to a great understanding yet all the spirit within me faints when i watch men's deeds matched with the guerdon they find for good comes in evil's traces and the evil the good replaces and life mid the changing faces wandereth weak and blind what, what wilt thou grant me o god? god lo this is the prayer of my travail some well-being 
and chance not very bitter thereby spirit uncrippled by pain and a mind not deep to unravel truth unseen nor yet dark with the brand of a lie with a veering mood to borrow its light from every morrow fair friends and no deep sorrow well could man live and die yet my spirit is no more clean and the weft of my hope is torn for the deed of wrong that mine eyes have seen the lie and the rage and the scorn a star among men yes a star that in hellas was bright by a father's wrath driven far to the wilds of the night oh alas for the sands of the shore alas for the breaks of the hill where the wolves shall fear thee no more and thy cry to dictina is still no more in the yoke of thy car shall the colts of Venetia fleet nor limna's echoes quiver afar to the clatter of galloping feet the sleepless music of old that leapt in the lyre ceaseth now and is cold in the halls of thy sire the bowers are discrowned and unladen where artemis lay on the lea and the love-dream of many a maiden lost in the losing of thee and i even i for thy fall o friend amid tears and tears endure to the end of the empty years of a life run dry in vain didst thou bear him thou mother forlorn ye gods that did snare him lo i cast in your faces my hate and my scorn ye love-linked graces alas for the day was he not then to you that ye cast him away the stainless and true from the old happy places look yonder tis the prince's man i ween speeding toward the gate most dark of mien a henchman enters in haste <sighs> ye women whither shall i go to seek king theseus is he in this dwelling speak lo where he cometh through castle gate theseus comes out from the castle o king i bear thee tidings of dire weight to thee i and to every man i ween from athens to the marches of trozen what some new stroke hath touched unknown to me the sister cities of my sovereignty hippolytus is nay not dead but stark outstretched a hair's breadth this side of the dark how slain was there some other man whose wife he had like mine denied that sought his life his own wild team destroyed him and the dire curse of thy lips the boon of thy great sire is granted thee o king and thy son slain ye gods and thou poseidon not in vain i called thee father thou hast heard my prayer how did he die speak on how closed the snare of heaven to slay the shamer of my blood twas by the bank of the beating sea we stood we thralls and decked the steeds and combed each mane weeping for word had come that ne'er again the foot of our hippolytus should roam this land but waste in exile by thy doom so stood we till he came and in his tone no music now save sorrows like our own and in his train a concourse without end of many a chase fellow and many a friend at last he brushed his sobs away and spake why this fond loitering i would not break my father's law ho there my coursers four and chariot quick this land is mine no more thereat be sure each man of us made speed swifter than speech we brought them up each steed well dight and shining at our prince's side he grasped the reins upon the rail one stride and there he stood a perfect charioteer each foot in its own station set then clear his voice rose and his arms to heaven were spread o zeus if i be false strike thou me dead but dead or living let my father see one day how falsely he hath hated me even as he spake he lifted up the goad and smote and the steeds sprang 
and down the road we henchmen followed hard beside the rein each hand to speed him toward the argive plain and epidaurus so we made our way up toward the desert region where the bay curls to a promontory near the verge of our trozen facing the southward surge of saron's gulf just there an angry sound slow swelling like god's thunder underground broke on us and we trembled and the steeds pricked their ears skyward and threw back their heads and wonder came on all men and a fright whence rose that awful voice and swift our sight turned seaward down the salt and roaring sand and there above the horizon seemed to stand a wave unearthly crested in the sky till skiron's cape first vanished from mine eye then sank the isthmus hidden then the rock of epidaurus then it broke one shock and roar of gasping sea and spray flung far and shoreward swept where stood the prince's car three lines of wave together raced and full in the white crest of them a wild sea bull flung to the shore a fell and marvellous thing the whole land held his voice and answering roared in each echo and all we gazing there gazed seeing not twas more than eyes could bear then straight upon the team wild terror fell howbeit the prince cool-eyed and knowing well each changing mood a horse has gripped the reins hard in both hands then as an oarsman strains up from his bench so strained he on the thong back in the chariot swinging but the young wild steeds bit hard the curb and fled afar nor rein nor guiding hand nor mortised car stayed them at all for when he veered them round and aimed their flying feet to grassy ground in front uprose that thing and turned again the four great coursers terror mad but when their blind rage drove them toward the rocky places silent and ever nearer to the traces it followed rockward till one wheel-edge grazed the chariot tripped and flew and all was mazed in turmoil up went wheel-box with a din where the rock jagged and nave and axle pin and there the long reins round him there was he dragging entangled irretrievably a dear head battering at the chariot side sharp rocks and ripped flesh and a voice that cried stay stay o ye who fattened at my stalls dash me not into nothing o thou false curse of my father help help whoso can an innocent innocent and stainless man many there were that laboured then i wot to bear him succour but could reach him not till who knows how at last the tangled rein unclasped him and he fell some little vein of life still pulsing in him all beside the steeds the horned horror of the tide had vanished who knows where in that wild land o king i am a bondsman of thine hand yet love nor fear nor duty me shall win to say thine innocent son hath died in sin all women born may hang themselves for me and swing their dying words from every tree on ida for i know that he was true o oh god so cometh new disaster new despair and no escape from what must be hate of the man thus stricken lifted me at first to joy at hearing of thy tale but now some shame before the gods some pale pity for mine own blood hath o'er me come i laugh not neither weep at this fell doom how then behoves it bear him here or how best do thy pleasure speak lord yet if thou wilt mark at all my word 
thou wilt not be fierce-hearted to thy child in misery ay bring him hither let me see the face of him who durst deny my deep disgrace and his own sin yea speak with him and prove his clear guilt by god's judgments from above the henchman departs to fetch hippolytus theseus sits waiting in stern gloom while the chorus sing at the close of their song a divine figure is seen approaching on a cloud in the air and the voice of artemis speaks thou comest to bend the pride of the hearts of god and man cyprus and by thy side in earth encircling span he of the changing plumes the wing that the world illumes as over the leagues of land flies he over the salt and sounding sea for mad is the heart of love and gold the gleam of his wing and all to the spell thereof bend when he makes his spring all life that is wild and young in mountain and wave and stream all that of earth is sprung or breathes in the red sunbeam yea and mankind o'er all a royal throne cyprian cyprian is thine alone o thou that rulest in aegeus hall i charge thee hearken yea it is i artemis virgin of god most high thou bitter king art thou glad withal for thy murdered son for thine ear bent low to a lying queen for thine heart so swift amid things unseen lo all may see what end thou hast won go sink thine head in the waste abyss or aloft to another world than this birdwise with wings fly far to thine hiding far over this blood that clots and clings for in righteous men and in holy things no rest is thine nor abiding the cloud has become stationary in the air here theseus all the story of thy grief verily i bring but anguish not relief yet twas for this i came to show how high and clean was thy son's heart that he may die honoured of men ay and to tell no less the frenzy or in some sort the nobleness of thy dead wife one spirit there is whom we that know the joy of white virginity most hate in heaven she sent her fire to run in phaedra's veins so that she loved thy son yet strove she long with love and in the stress fell not till by her nurse's craftiness betrayed who stole with oaths of secrecy to entreat thy son and he most righteously nor did her will nor when thy railing scorn beat on him broke the oath that he had sworn for god's sake and thy phaedra panic-eyed wrote a false writ and slew thy son and died lying but thou wast nimble to believe theseus at first bewildered then dumbfounded now utters a deep groan it stings thee theseus nay hear on and grieve yet sorer wottest thou three prayers were thine of sure fulfilment from thy sire divine hast thou no foes about thee then that one thou vile king must be turned against thy son the deed was thine thy sea-born sire but heard the call of prayer and bowed him to his word but thou in his eyes and in mine art found evil who wouldst not think nor probe nor sound the deeps of prophet's lore nor day by day leave time to search but swifter than man may let loose the curse to slay thine innocent son o oh, goddess let me die nay thou hast done a heavy wrong yet even beyond this ill abides for thee forgiveness twas the will of cyprus that these evil things should be sating her wrath and this immutably hath zeus ordained in heaven no god may thwart a god's fixed will we grieve but stand apart 
else but for fear of the great father's blame never had i to such extreme of shame bowed me be sure as here to stand and see slain him i loved best of mortality thy fault o king its ignorance sunders wide from very wickedness and she who died by death the more disarmed thee making dumb the voice of question and the storm has come most bitterly of all on thee. Yet I have mine own sorrow too. When good men die, there is no joy in heaven, albeit our ire on child and house of the evil falls like fire. A throng is seen approaching. Hippolytus enters, supported by his attendants. Lo, it is he, the bright young head, yet upright there. Ah, the torn flesh and the blood-stained hair, alas for the kindred's trouble. It falls as fire from a god's hand sped, to death and mourning double. Ah, oh, pain, pain, pain! O oh, unrighteous curse! O oh, unrighteous sire! No hope. My head is stabbed with fire and a leaping spasm about my brain. Stay, let me rest. I can no more. Oh, fell, fell steeds that my own hand fed. Have ye maimed me thus? Have ye maimed me and slain that loved me of yore? Soft there, ye thralls! No trembling hands as ye lift me now. Who is that who stands at the right? Now firm and with a measured tread lift one a cursed and stricken sore by a father's sinning. <laughs> Thou, Zeus, dost see me. Yea, it is I, the proud and pure, the server of God, the white and shining in sanctity. To a visible death, to an open sword I walk my ways, and all the labor of saintly days lost, lost without meaning. Oh, God, it crawls this agony over me. Let be, ye thralls. Come, death, and cover me. Come, O thou healer blessed. But a little more, and my soul is clear, and the anguish o'er. Oh, a spear, a spear, to rend my soul to its rest. Oh, strange false curse, was there some blood-stained head? Some father of my line, unpunished, whose guilt lived in his kin, And passed and slept, till after this long day it lights. Oh, why on me? Me, far away, and innocent of sin. No oh, words that cannot save. When will this breathing end in that last deep pain that is painlessness? Tis sleep I crave. When wilt thou bring me sleep? Thou dark and midnight magic of the grave. Sore stricken man, bethink thee in this stress. Thou dost but die for thine own nobleness. Ah, no oh, breath of heavenly fragrance. Though my pain burns, I can feel thee and find rest again. The, the goddess Artemis is with me here. With thee and loving thee, poor sufferer. Dost see me, mistress, nearing my last sleep? Ay, and would weep for thee, if gods could weep. Who now shall hunt with thee, or hold thy quiver? He dies, but my love cleaves to him forever. Who, who guide thy chariot, keep thy shrine flowers fresh? The accursed Cyprian caught him in her mesh. The Cyprian? Now I see it. Ay, it was she. She missed her worship, loathed thy chastity. Ha! <laughs> Three lives by her one hand. Tis all clear now. Yea, three. Thy father and his queen, and thou. My father? <laughs> Yea, he too is pitiable. A plotting goddess tripped him, and he fell. Father, where art thou? Oh, thou sufferest sore. Even unto death, child, there is joy no more. I, I pity thee in this coil. I more than me. Would I could lie there dead instead of thee. O oh, bitter bounty of Poseidon's love. Would God my lips had never breathed thereof. Nay, thine own rage had slain me then, somewise. 
a lying spirit had made blind mine eyes ah me would that a mortal's curse could reach to god let be for not though deep beneath the sod thou liest not unrequited nor unsung shall this fell stroke from cypress rancor sprung quell thee mine own the saintly and the true my hand shall win its vengeance through and through, piercing with flawless shaft what heart soe'er of all men living is most dear to her. Yea, and to thee, for this sore travail's sake, honours most high in chosen will I make. For yokeless maids before their bridal night shall shear for thee their tresses, and a right of honouring tears be thine in ceaseless store and virgins' thoughts in music evermore turn toward thee, and praise thee in the song of Phaedra's far-famed love and thy great wrong. O seed of ancient Aegeus, bend thee now and clasp thy son. I hold and fear not thou, not knowingly hast thou slain him, and man's way, when gods send error, needs must fall astray, and thou, Hippolytus, shrink not from the king thy father. Thou wast born to bear this thing. Farewell. I may not watch man's fleeting breath, nor strain mine eyes with the effluence of death, and sure that terror now is very near. The cloud slowly rises and floats away. Farewell. Farewell, most blessed. Lift thee clear of soiling men. Thou wilt not grieve in heaven for my long love. Father, thou art forgiven. It was her will. I am not wroth with thee. I have obeyed her all my days. Ah, me! The dark is drawing down upon mine eyes. It hath me. Father, hold me. Help me rise. Theseus, supporting him in his arms. Ah, woe! How dost thou torture me, my son? I see the great gates opening. I am gone. Gone, and my hand red reeking from this thing. Nay, nay, thou art a soiled of manslaying. Thou leavest me clear of murder? Sayest thou so? Yes, by the virgin of the stainless bow. Dear son, ah, now I see thy nobleness. Pray that a true-born child may fill my place. Ah, me, thy righteous and God-fearing heart. Farewell, a long farewell, dear father, ere we part. Theseus bends down and embraces him passionately. Not yet, O oh, hope and bear while thou hast breath. Lo, I have borne my burden. This is death. Quick, father, lay the mantle on my face. Theseus covers his face with a mantle and rises. Ye bounds of Pallas and of Pelops' race, what greatness have ye lost! Woe, woe is me! Thou, Cyprian, long shall I remember thee. On all this spoke, both low and, and high, high, a grief hath fallen beyond men's fears. There cometh a throbbing of many tears, a sound as of waters falling. For when great men die, a mighty name and a bitter cry rise up from a nation calling. They move into the castle, carrying the body of Hippolytus. End of Part 2 End of Hippolytus by Euripides Translated by Gilbert Murray